All right, so we're going to go over those dot diagrams too. We're going to start off with how many dots would be in each diagram. Remember that basically we're using the periodic table pattern. Everybody in column one has one. Everybody in column two has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To help us get there, you can check what you've done. We have one carbon, that's four, plus four hydrogens, that's another four. So that one will have eight. Here we have one phosphorus. Again, phosphorus is in the column of five, right next to carbon. It has five, three hydrogens. Again, we have eight. Oxygen is six, plus two more, eight. Here, two oxygens, so that six and six is 12, plus two more, 14. Here we have an O and an H, six, one. The negative sign, the negative charge, means add one extra one. So again, eight. And again, you know, sometimes it helps. You can go carbon, that's four, three oxygens. Well, that's going to be another 18 plus two for the charge. So that's 24. Okay, one for the hydrogen, five for nitrogen. And again, three oxygens, that's 18. Nitrogen five, oxygen six, three times six gives me the 18. So again, 24. So here I have one for the hydrogen, another eight for the two carbons, three for the three hydrogens, 12 for the two oxygens, 24. Here I have one, four, and five. So that's gonna get me to 10. Three times four, that's 12. Each carbon has four, three of them, that makes 12. And four, so that gives me 16. One carbon, two oxygens, four and 12, another 16. Boron, boron has only three. It's a semi-metal, but sometimes it can act as a non-metal. Boron has three plus three for the hydrogens. That gives me six. And then finally, the uh, oxygen, three of them, that's gonna be 18, so that's 18. Three chlorines, that would be 21. Three times seven, all of the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, Bromine, iodine, and acetine are all seven valence electrons. So that's the first part. That's where you always start, step one. How many dots are we going to have? Any questions on that part? We're going to have a quiz on Friday, and some of the questions will just be like, you know, how many dots? How many valence electrons? All right, so next we pick the center. Generally speaking, that's a carbon, but otherwise uh, never a hydrogen, never a halogen, because they can only bond once, so they can't be in the middle. The more times it bonds, the more likely to be in the center. So A, carbon in the middle, surrounded by the four hydrogens. So there's your step one. You could even zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. So that's step two, carbon in the middle, the three, the four hydrogens around it. Step three, put in our bonds. We put them in pairs. We're not worried about which one belongs to carbon, which belongs to hydrogen. We're just doing it always two dots at a time. So there's one bond, two bonds, 
three bonds, four bonds. I've used up all eight dots. My carbon has eight dots around it. Each hydrogen has two dots. You know, and again, you don't have to do this, but one way to visualize it is there is carbon's outermost shell. It has all eight dots, the shell is full, so it's now like neon and noble gas. Likewise, each of the carbon, or each of the hydrogen, excuse me, you know, there's hydrogen's one shell, and you can see the bond where they overlap. So that's another way to help you visualize what's going on. But there is part A, pretty easy one. Any questions on that one? It makes sense. Again, how many dots? What goes in the middle, the rest go around, and then start putting in the bonds. Once I get past the bonds, until I run out of dots. All right, we'll go to B. This one has phosphorus and has three hydrogens. Okay. Put in the bonds. There's only three hydrogens, so there can only be three bonds. I've used up six of my eight dots. Can't add any more to the hydrogens. Hydrogens can never have more than two, but I need two more to take care of the phosphorus. And now that one is done. Two above, two below, two to the left two to the right. Any questions? All right, H2O. O is in the middle. There's my two hydrogens. Please note, I did not put them straight across. Okay, if you remember when we were doing uh, our valence electrons, for oxygen, we did it this way. That's how we did our six dots. And this goes back to how orbitals are filled. We put one in each one before we double up. So one, two, three, four, and then we double up. We've run out of the six. So it's gonna look like this. It's not gonna look like that. Okay, it's never going to be straight across. So our two hydrogens, and it really doesn't matter if you go here and here or here and up there. Okay, as long as they're kind of making a right angle. Now we can put in our two bonds. We've used up four of our eight dots. And now the last four and there's H2O. So H2O will always have that kind of bent shape or if you want, kind of, kind of twist it around a little bit. Kind of like Mickey Mouse ears, the Mickey Mouse face. Here's the face, here's the two ears, okay? So that is H2O. Okay, again, it'll never be HOH straight across, it'll always be bent like that. All right, now H2O2, obviously two oxygens are gonna go in the middle, hydrogens can never be in the middle, and it really doesn't matter, you're gonna have one hydrogen on one oxygen, one hydrogen on the other oxygen, we can put in our bonds, like that. And again, you can see how if you're not careful, it's it's harder to see where the dots are because, you know, I almost got the dots onto the H there. That's six. I got to fill out the rest of the 14. Hydrogens can't get any more. So eight, 10, 
file 14, there is H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. This is stuff sometimes when you get a scratch or a little cut, you can put that on to disinfect it. Also note, it, it tends to have a kind of bent shape, just like H2O did, but it's got an extra hydrogen. All right, now we got a couple of ions, so we got extra electrons. So first, OH. Doesn't matter where you want to put the H, you can put it on top or on the left or on the right, on the bottom. There's only two, so it's just OH. Here's my bond. Hydrogen can't get any more. Here's my eight. And then because it's an ion, put it inside like that. <coughs> so I think so far, all of these have just had nice uh, single bonds. All right, so next, little typo there, it should just be an F, not an FB, I don't know why that little B is there, but it's, it's there. So, carbon is almost always in the middle, and let's go ahead and just fill in the three oxygens, okay? So, Put in our bonds. Like so. And now we go around the outside ones first before we worry about the inside one. So that's six. We got up to 24. So there's eight. There's 10. There's 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Now, I stopped. I'm up to 22. How many dots do I have left to put? I have two dots left. Okay, I've done 22. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So please note, it helps when you kind of pay attention as you're going along. I've done 22. I have 24. I only got two left. But I have one spot here. And I have one spot up here. In other words, I really need four, but I only have two left. When we're missing two, double bond. So instead of putting two here, I'm gonna put in that double bond. It does not matter which of the oxygens gets the one double bond, but uh, you do have to have that double bond on one of them. And then again, it's an ion. So it gets its charge like that. So the first one that had a double bond in it. And, and again, it really helps. I put in all the bonds. Now I'm starting to fill it out. And I just start counting and I'm paying attention. 12, 14, 16, 8. Wait, I'm not going to have enough. Okay, and, you, and usually once you get to a point where like there's just a couple of spots left to fill with two dots, you can tell you're not going to have enough. And then you have to start thinking, okay, 
I'm going to need a double bond. Where do I put it? Because I can't use anything that's already been a bond. I got to use free ones. In other words, if I just go back a step, you know, here's what I had. I put in my bonds first. So that got me to six. And then if I'd done this, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24. Did I do that right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and now 24. So now I've used up all my 24 dots, but I'm too short. So I could do that first, but then I'd have to erase, mark out, move to create. So you can, you can always do it that way too, but if you're paying attention and counting as you're going along, 14, 16, 18, oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna run out. That'll, that'll help in doing that. All right, HNO3. Again, the one to be in the middle is the one that's going to have the most bonds. Oxygens can only bond twice. Nitrogens, nitrogens have five, which means three holes, three spots. That's why it tends to be a negative three charge, three spots to get filled in. So we're gonna put the nitrogen in the middle. And then we've got our oxygens. Now, this one's a little tricky. Uh, in fact, let me let me go ahead and do it on a separate paper first. So this this would be like our first guess. Okay, we're gonna do that. We got four things. We'll put this nitrogen in the middle. Now this is not right, but it, it's a good guess to begin with. The reason I say it's not right is that it'll be obvious in a moment, okay? So now I put in my bonds. So there's my eight. Remember we have 24 total. Okay, hydrogen's already got its two. So there's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Note the one oxygen doesn't have any. It's missing two. I need a double bond. Here's the problem, okay? And it doesn't matter which oxygen I had made done this. The problem is if it needs a double bond, well, it's only connected to the nitrogen. That needs to be its double bond. But where am I going to pull them from? Okay, in other words, I can't, the two, four, six, it's, it's only got six. I need to pull two from the nitrogen into the double bond, but that's a bond, that's a bond, that's a bond. I can't pull bonds from anywhere. Now, a hint is nitrogen doesn't bond four times. It only bonds three times. Okay, so while that was a very natural attempt, it turns out that what it needed to be was like that, where the hydrogen was on one of the oxygens. It doesn't matter which one again. Okay, in other words, nitrogen just bonds three times. That way, there's going to be two dots that will be free on the nitrogen and I can create that double bond. So let's do the same thing I just did before. Two, four, six. Okay, there's there's all my bonds. Now let's go ahead and take care of the oxygen. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 
24. Now note which one has the missing two. This is the guy with the missing two. And I can take these two guys, slide them to the other side. And now the nitrogen has its eight, that oxygen still has its eight, and I have a double bond. So a little tricky on this one. So I have to do that. And again, it doesn't matter which oxygen you did it to, but basically we're gonna end up in a situation in which And by the way, it really doesn't matter. There are multiple ways to do this one. It really doesn't matter which one gets the double bond. So for instance, that one also works. Any of the three oxygens can have the double bond because they all have unpaired dots that you can move around. But now, Everybody has eight. That one has eight. That one has eight. Here's my double bond sharing four dots. And that one has eight. The hydrogen only two. So, little bit different there. All right, next off, okay. So we got some carbons in the middle. And let's see. I got some hydrogens on the outside, a couple of oxygens. And then we got another hydrogen off of one of those oxygens. So you'll see that kind of combination a lot, CH3 up in the end. Let's go ahead and put in my bonds. There are all my bonds. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. They've got 10 to go. So 16, 18, 20, 22. Now I could put the last two right there. But if I do that, that will mean this one only has six, two, four, six. You might think, well, couldn't we put a double bond in here? Then the carbon would have eight, but where's the where do the two come from? This carbon has already bonded four times, so I can't have a double bond. That would make five. It has to come from these two right there, so I'm just going to Put them in a different color so you can see them. There's my double bond. Again, it's easy to be a little bit messy. So the double bond's up here. So that that one has eight. The carbon has eight. This carbon has eight. That oxygen has eight. And when it when you think when you're thinking about what might uh, you know which way do I go? You've always got to go back to Everybody but hydrogen ends up with eight. So if I'm missing some, I got to move things around to get everybody to eight. I can't have somebody at 10 or 12. They got to all be back to eight. That's, that's the rule that I'm going for. All right, I, see in the middle. HCN, put in my bonds. Put 
There's my two bonds. Now I've used up four. I only have 10, so I got six more. But if I count two, four, six, eight, 10, I actually need 10 more. Again, two up here, two down there, two up there, two down there, and two over here. That's 10, but I only got six left. I'm going to be four short. If I am four short, that means I'm gonna need a triple bond. Hydrogen cannot be in a triple bond. Hydrogens can only bond once. Hydrogens can only have two dots beside them. And then that's two, four, six, eight. And my last two dots, there is HCN. C3H4, three carbons, four hydrogens. So that works. Put in my bonds. Now I'm going to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I have 12 so far. Got 16 total, so that means I have four left. But 1, 2, 3, 4 spots means I need eight, but I only got four, so I'm going to be four short. Now, one possibility like we just did an I could be a triple bond. Okay, the only thing is carbon can only bond four times. So this carbon with those two hydrogens, that's already two. I can't make that a triple then because two and three more, a triple is like three bonds, that would be five. This carbon has already got two hydrogens bonded to it. So I can't make that a triple because that would be again Three, five bonds, but I can do this. When I'm missing four, it could be a triple like I was, or it could be two doubles. That also works. It just depends on how many bonds I have available. But note that carbon in the middle, there's this eight dots. Two on two, a double bond on one side, a double bond on the other. This carbon, there's this eight dots with four on one orbital. And this carbon likewise has. Four. So sometimes when I'm missing four, it's a triple, such as I, but sometimes it's two doubles. And then honestly, if it's a big enough molecule, it could be either one. In these two cases, I didn't have any choices because carbon can only bond four times. All right, K, CO2, carbon in the middle, two oxygens, and again, if I put in my bonds, okay, that takes care of four, eight, 10, 12, 14. I have two dots left, I guess, two, four, six, eight, 10, I got 12. I got four dots left, but I got one, two, three, four spots. This is another one of those. I'm missing four, okay? But I have two oxygens, each of which only has six. They need to get to eight, two. So I'm gonna end up with two double 
bomb. Now, I'm kind of taking shortcuts here in the sense of I know what the answer is. If you're doing this for the first time, it can be a little bit tricky. But um, the thing is, if you did it the wrong way, what you got to come back and do is go, does each oxygen have eight? Does the carbon have eight? And it might be you find out, well, wait, one of those oxygen now has 10. That's not going to work. It can only have the eight or the carbon has too many, or the carbon doesn't have enough. There'll be some atom, maybe you've already done your dots and you're gonna to have to erase them, but there'll be some atom that either doesn't have eight because it's got too few or it's got too many. All right, L, borons in the middle, three hydrogens, it's a lot like B was, put in my bonds, I've used up all six dots. Now, you're like, well, wait a minute, the boron doesn't have eight. And yeah, it doesn't. This one is a exception. to the octet rule. If I don't even have eight dots, how can I get to eight? So the difference between BH3 and PH3 is the P bonds three times, but it has one unshared pair. The BH3 bonds three times, and then it has an empty orbital. And again, it does not matter whether it was the top one, the left, the right, or the bottom one, one of the four spots is empty. But there are exceptions to the octet rule. If you go into your book in the bonding chapter, it'll actually have a subsection that says exceptions to the octet rule. As far as I'm concerned, we're not going to give you any test questions or quiz questions on the exceptions. I just want you to know that they can exist. This is one of the reasons that they can exist is if I don't even have eight dots total, then how can I obey the octet rule? But there are other ones. There are always exceptions to rules. All right, O3, this is ozone, by the way. O3 is ozone, so. Three oxygens. Let's go ahead and put in my bonds. That takes care of four, six, eight, ten. Uh, I still have eight left. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm just checking. I'm going to need two here, two there. That's four, six, eight. 10. I'm going to need 10 dots total uh, but I only have eight dots left. That means I'm going to be missing two. So as I'm saying, if you pay attention as you're going along, two, four, six, eight, ten. I got ten, five spots, so that's 10 dots. But I've already used 10 and I only have 18. I only got eight dots left, so I'm going to be missing two, so that means I'm going to have a double bond. So let's go ahead and put in a double bond, and now I'll just finish it off. There, that oxygen has its eight now, and it doesn't really matter. Let's put that one there, and that one has its eight. Now, it turns out this one is actually a, a kind of special case. Um, there's a term called resonance in which the double bond, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E, -E, resonance, the double bond actually switches back and forth between the two outer oxygens. Does it very fast, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, 
because uh, of just the energies involved. And so uh, there's a term, again, it's in the book. We're not going to really test on it. I just want you to know that this is one of those kind of interesting cases there. All right. And our last one. CL3. Did you put that down? How come? Anybody remember? Where's chlorine? Chlorine's a halogen. The halogens already have seven. They only got one hole. They could only bond once. So how come one of them be in the middle? To be in the middle like this, means you got to be able to bond on either side. Okay, this one can't. Chlorine, only one bond. And only one hole. It can only bond once. It cannot be in the middle. So just because some things can be three in a row, doesn't mean everything can be three in a row. That was the purpose of that last one. You just can't, can't be mindless about it. All right. Come out a little bit. If you have already submitted this assignment and it has a bunch of mistakes, and again, when I'm looking at these trying to judge mistakes, I just use the octet rule. Eight, 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 not counting the hydrogens, of course. Eight, eight, white 10. Oh, four. There's a problem. Okay, that, that's the easy way to do it. Are you checking? But if you turn it in already and it's got a bunch of mistakes, just resubmit it with it fixed now. Any questions? All right, so 